Hello friends and welcome back to the dork side. I'm the dork in the road and today it's time for the first oil change on my 2022 Kawasaki KLR650. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy so please consider subscribing. I just got back from a camping trip with uh, beards, bikes and camping, McLovin and For the Love of Knobs and I am at 623 miles total so you know what that means. It means it's time for the first oil change on the new KLR. And to do the first oil change we are going to use the oil change kit from Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Did you know they have an oil change kit tool? on their website. You just go to it, you put it in the make, model, and year of your bike, and it'll spit out a kit that has any crush washers you need, oil, filter, and uh, this paper funnel actually comes with it. So this is the Kawasaki KLR650 kit. I'm also gonna put in the flush mount drain plug because I'll show you when I get underneath there but the stock drain plug sticks out way too far and it's just dangerous and terrifying. And they have these kits for every bike. I, that's what I use when I change the oil on the DRZ, the Africa Twin, whatever. So I will link to that for you, put it in the description, and you don't have to worry about finding the right crush washer or the filter. It does all that for you. They just send you the complete kit. It's pretty neat. I don't really want to get into the what oil should I use debate because I know there are 400 bazillion opinions out there, but personally, I'm a fan of conventional oil for the first oil change, which is what I got here. So this is the Kawasaki conventional oil. After I do the second oil change, I will probably switch to synthetic. Honestly, I use synthetic because I can go longer between oil changes because I'm a lazy mechanic. But conventional is supposed to be better in the beginning because synthetic is too slippery and doesn't really allow the engine to wear in as well. And again, I'm not a mechanic. I know you guys are going to jump in and it's gonna, all the comments are going to be about this. It's not the point of the video. That's just what I've read and what I sort of believe. So that's how I do it. You do your own thing. If you want to slap Rotella in there the day you get it home from the dealership, be my guest, man. Do your thing. It's your bike. We're going to crawl underneath. We're going to change the oil. And I just thought I would bring you guys along on the process because I know some of you are curious. But 600 miles, let's uh, let's drain this baby and see what it looks like in there. Crush washer, got the filter, oil. It takes 2.1 quarts of oil for the 2022 with the filter. So I got three quarts here. The paper disposable funnel is nice. And then I've got a 17 millimeter socket and an eight millimeter socket. I will need an Allen wrench to put the new one in. So I'll grab that too. But if you don't have this low profile drain bolt, you're rocking with the stock. You just need the eight and the 17 to do this. It's a pretty standard oil change. This shouldn't take very long at all. I'm gonna start the bike up so the oil can warm up. Okay, here we are underneath the bike with our friend, the drain plug. It's the huge one right in the middle that sticks down way too far. If you have the adventure like me, there are two bolts here where your crash bars bolt on. That's not it. I'm sure you could figure that out, but just throwing it out there. Bike's pretty muddy because I've been riding off road a lot, but I did take some time to just clean up the area around the drain plug just to keep any dirt from getting in there. Uh, I did the same on the filter up here, which you'll see when we get to the filter, but I'm just gonna crack this and drain this oil. So I let the bike warm up for a few minutes. Should be good to go. Oh yeah, that was easy. Barely tight. And you remember that when you put it back on. I mean, it, it doesn't even need a quarter turn past hand tight usually. I think the torque spec on this is like 21 foot pounds, but I've always been a fan of the get it hand tight and give it a quarter turn because that's what my dad taught me. So you do whatever you think is best, but you could torque wrench it if you want. Just don't over tighten it is the point I'm trying to make. That was barely tight at all. Push up on it while you unscrew. The oil won't come pouring out all over your hand. And then this crush washer actually looks okay, it's brand new. And then once it's loose, you just gotta do a magic Houdini switcheroo. Boom, bam, nailed it. Not a drop in my hand. That doesn't usually happen, so don't worry. I'll get messy before we're done with this. That oil looks like crap. I don't know what they put in these things when they bring them from the factory, but it looks like sewage is what it looks like. I'm gonna give it a minute or so until it stops peeing oil. Oh, I didn't open this. Also open the filler cap to get a little air in there. That helps a lot. This will take a minute. You can rock the bike back and forth a few times too to kind of loosen up the oil, but you know, you don't have to get every drop. Next up, just these two bolts on the side of the engine. It's an eight millimeter. This is probably overkill with all the paper towels, but it's a new bike and I don't want oil all over the engine. So I'm willing to look like a little bit overkill. So there's two here and then you have to pry this tab up. Yeah, and they're just hand snug too. So just keep that in mind when you put it back on. And this is obviously factory spec because this is the first oil change, so. The last person to do this was a tech at the factory or the dealership, I'm guessing the fa uh, the factory. There's always gonna be a little oil in here. Two bolts, looking good. I actually just watched Everide's KLR 650 oil change video, and his bike was a Gen 1, but it's almost exactly the same, so shout out to Everide. But uh, I'm just gonna put uh, 
a paper towel under this. I don't mar it up as I pry this off. This crash bar is actually slightly in the way for this. Let's see if we can wiggle it off now. Yep, I can. Okay. A couple things to note. Oh, there's some oil coming out. There's an arrow pointing up. Remember that when you put it back in. Yeah, I've got oil draining out. That's always going to happen. That's why the paper towels are there. Soak some of that up if I can before I pull this filter out. The oil looks decidedly green, Kawasaki green. Well done, Cowie. So there's a shaft that runs down the middle of this that has to come out. And the beveled end, so it goes like this. The beveled end goes towards the engine. So you're just gonna put a little oil on your gaskets. Oh, I gotta clean that filter thing out, hold on. You shove this in like this. But remember, the beveled end goes towards the engine. That's important. Try to clean that out if we can get the rest of the oil out. That did not even help. Cool, good job, everyone. Well played. Now you're trying to not get oil in the engine? Fail. Anyway, new filter goes in, beveled side in. There we go. Okay, new filter's in. Put the cap back on, remember, pointed side up. The arrow pointing up, line it up right. Just smack it back on there. Line it up correctly once you've done that. Always start these with your fingers. So you know you're not cross-threading them, especially if you don't have the cap 100% lined up. I want to say it's like 17 foot-pounds of torque on these, but again, I like snug, I can tight, and then just a little bit more. It's half an Ugga if you're measuring on the Ugga scale. Not even half. Seriously, like, that much snug and then just a pinch more should not be hard to break loose when the time comes do not over tighten those just gonna start this thing and again use your fingers don't start it with a wrench don't force it your engine is ruined if you if you strip this thing out it's a real pain in the ass to fix it big deal um crush washers on there so I'll also link this flush mount drain plug because it, it adds a ton of clearance. I mean, an inch of clearance, half inch maybe, to the bottom of this. It's much better. As long as you're careful with the Allen key, I don't see any disadvantage to it. Because it was sticking out. Like, here's the plastic skid plate, the stock skid plate. The bolt was lower than that. So I could slide across a rock here. Oh, cool, I just put all that in the oils. I could slide across a rock here and shear that thing off. Now that's a lot less likely. So we're going to tighten that down. It's a six millimeter Allen. And again, not going crazy here. The bike starts to move, it's probably tight enough. Gotcha, okay, that looks a lot nicer too. It's a lot cleaner. Nothing left to do but put oil in. Let's do that. This is my 2022 KLR 650 owner's manual. And I just wanna point out, right here it says 2.1 US quarts of oil. That's the oil capacity. I'm going by the manual. I'm gonna put 2.1 quarts in and we'll let it run and see where it sits. This paper funnel they give you is actually kind of a nice touch. Disposable funnel. Let's see how it works. Oh, that's not bad. That'll work. What does port flow? 10W40 Kawasaki conventional oil. Performance oil, it says. Let's see how well this funnel works. Oh yeah, you're gonna have to pour kind of slow, but it's all right. I got nothing but time. No, it's not bad. It's not bad. It takes 2.1 quarts, and with the Rocky Mountain kit, they automatically sent me three quarts. So you always have enough. Even though it's just 0.1, they sent you a whole nother quart. So I'm just going to use the measure on the side here. And we'll, like I said, just start her up and check the oil. Doesn't need a ton, just a little dippity do. That's probably about right, based on the measurement. Put the cap back on. This is just plastic, so you don't, you gotta be real careful when you start the threads. You can actually, if you do it backwards, it'll fall right into the threads, and then you can go forward. That's how I like to do it. See, this is just hand tight. It's plastic, so you don't want to get crazy. Still, it feels tight. Then we'll start the bike up and let the oil work its way through, and we'll check the oil in a minute or two. Oh, it sounds better already. 
gonna make sure you dispose of your old oil properly. I poured the old oil into the quartz I just emptied with the new oil, and then I just take them all to the auto parts store. Most auto parts store will recycle motor oil. Some places they'll even pick it up on the curb if you put it out. Just use the funnel, pour it back in there. That is some black, nasty oil. It has a green tinge, I'm telling you. Super weird. I don't see a ton of metal shavings in there. That's a good sign. I've really been babying it. You guys can see there's just a few sparklies in there, but honestly, I've broken in a few engines and this is one of the better looking ones. I don't see any shavings, no long pieces. It's just little sparkles, little glitter pieces. So not bad. It's like paying them for gold, except for you don't want to find any. Here's your sight glass. You want your oil level to be between this mark and this mark, but it doesn't count on the side stand. You got to tip it up level. So let's check it. Okay, Laura, it takes a second for the oil to show up, I've noticed. Yeah, but if you tip it up level, look at that. Right in the middle. Feel pretty good about that. It's where it's supposed to be. And just check that from time to time. After an oil change, I always just like to pay attention under the bike for a few days to see if there's any oil appearing underneath it. Some of that will be stuff that dripped off if you're clumsy like me and got it on the skid plate. You're also gonna notice a slight oil burning smell if you got any on the engine at all. Um, don't worry about it for the first day or two, but if you still smell it like two weeks in, I would be worried. So just keep an eye on it, watch the oil level. But it looks good, I'm happy with it. Normally this is where I would take it for a ride. Just double check, make sure everything feels right and just sort of work the oil into the engine, but it's raining and the cars are parked too close together for me to get the bike out, so I'm not gonna do that at this moment. That's the oil change process on the new KLR. It's basically the same on all the KLRs. And honestly, it's pretty much the same on any motorcycle. That's not that different from the 250L. It's a little bit less complicated than the DRZ because the DRZ has two drain plugs, but otherwise it's exactly the same. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. Consider this a mini review of those Rocky Mountain ATV oil change kits because instead of having to go look up your filter number and what size crush washer you need and how many quarts of oil and put all that in the cart and order it all separate, you just go to Rocky Mountain, type in your bike, and it just does it for you. It, it doesn't cost any extra. It's just sort of a convenience thing they do so that you'll come back and buy oil change kits from them. So I will link that oil change kit below. It is nice to have everything you need. Got any questions about the oil change or the bike? Leave them in the comments. Appreciate you watching the video. If you have your own hints, tips, or tricks for changing the oil on your KLR, leave those in the comments because I'm sure people appreciate that. And you know what? Go ahead and debate oil in the comments because whatever, I like comments. Thank you for watching. I appreciate you. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Oh, thank you.